Hi everyone and welcome to Garden to Kitchen. Today we're going to be planting our apple tree. It's mid-May, beautiful weather, it's a warm morning and it's great time to plant the apple tree. I have behind me here a five-in-one variety and that is five varieties of apples growing on one semi-dwarf tree and we're going to be putting that tree into this hole. Now this hole here, I've been digging it for, I think it's been two weeks. I've been putting all the rough soil in this one here and all the good soil in this one. And what I'm gonna be doing is mixing some three-in-one soil with the good soil when I plant this tree. And also, I'm going to give you some information on how to plant it, in other words, which direction in relationship to the westerly winds, which is really crucial when you're planting an apple tree. Now, I've been slugging away at it with this uh, pick, and uh, I finally got it down to a reasonable size. And the size of the hole is very important. As you notice behind me here, I have the five and one apple tree, and this uh, planter at the bottom is 18 inches across and about 12 inches deep. So having the hole, we want the hole to be twice the size. That means that the hole needs to be roughly about 36 inches across the top, which it is. And of course, the hole needs to be at least 12 inches deep so we have to bury the pot and uh, we can double check that by simply putting a stick or something across this part here like that and by using a measuring tape we can check the depth of the hole like this and it is about 12 inches so the hole is ready to accept the tree. Now it's very important, uh, of course, when you're digging the hole uh, to remove all the rough soil in one wheelbarrow and all the good soil on this side here. What I've done is I've removed the grass, the sod, I've shaken it off, put it into this barrel here and I put the sod in the compost bin. So it's ready to go. I'm going to be adding some soil. I'm using a three-in-one soil with the native soil because I need more soil in here and I need an enriched product. So three-in-one is a compost with humus and, uh, and a soil with it as well. And uh, it will be great for this tree. I've used it before and I know this tree will be growing for the next 20 years and supply you with lots of apples. So it's very important to make a hole, as we say, a $20 hole for a $10 tree. In other words, spend more time on the hole where you're planting your tree, which is extremely important. So before we plant the tree, I want to touch upon the apple tree that you're going to purchase. We don't purchase tall trees or 40-foot apple trees at the nursery like your great-grandmother had at the farm, <laughs> possibly. But all the trees that we buy in a nursery are grafted onto a rootstock that keeps them a certain height so we can harvest the trees without a 12-foot ladder. Now, you can buy an apple tree with one variety. Let's call it a Cortland apple. So the tree grows and produces 100 Portland apples. Or you can buy a tree that has been grafted with a variety of apples like the one behind me and I'm going to talk about where it's grafted and the relationship to the westerly winds. Not as crucial when you're planting the tree, the orientation. Uh, if you don't want to have any problems, remember this tree is going to be a home for the next 20 years and you're going to harvest hundreds of apples from this tree. Now you can see it on this particular graft which is a honey crisp uh, apple tree and this part here is the tree and the bottom part is the uh, rootstock. This particular tree is a, a dwarf tree so it'll reach about 8 to 10 feet at maximum and that is controlled by the rootstock that is right here in this location and of course the roots that are growing in this uh, particular unit. 
the apple tree is grafted and you can see it's grafted onto the side I don't know if you can see it here onto the side and that's really important to identify and know because you want to place this side towards the west that is towards the westerly prevailing winds that tend to bend trees over because the wind is always coming from this side if the wind was to come from this side it would make this weak on this side especially when the tree is young so make sure that you plant your tree if it is a single variety and graft it at the bottom with the part here facing the west now this particular tree is a five in one variety which means that we have five different varieties of apples that are grafted onto the rootstock the rootstock of course being the roots at the bottom and of course the tree trunk that's growing up to this point here and that will control the height of this particular semi dwarf tree which will grow about 12 to 15 feet tall if not controlled by pruning this tree has five varieties a fuji a gala a brayburn and a honeycrisp and finally over here we have a red macintosh so we have five different varieties that will produce on this particular tree and they will pollinate each other which is a great idea if you're having only one tree in your backyard so the tree is finally in the ground i've oriented it to the westerly winds as i was speaking about before you've noticed that i put a bit of spray paint here indicating where the winds or the westerly winds are coming just to remind me that i have to point uh, the graft at the top here towards the wind and that's to make the uh, joint as strong as possible as the tree grows in addition to that you'll notice that i still have the planter the bucket still in the hole so you're probably wondering what am i doing well sometimes you get an apple tree and it's wrapped in a burlap bag and if you do that if you purchase one like that you just bury the burlap bag and that prevents uh, disturbing the roots now sometimes i've found that by pulling this out of the planter I find that the roots really get disturbed and the earth sometimes falls away. So this is the way I do it. What I do is I put the bucket uh, in the ground and then I trim away the bottom uh, like this. And you can see I've got the bottom of the bucket here trimmed all the way around. And I do the final trimming once I have it in the hole and I simply pull it out. And uh, there I have the bucket that's in the hole and i've also trimmed the sides so with the sides being trimmed i can simply pull out the planter without disturbing the roots so let's see if i can do that uh, without uh, breaking any roots so i've got it marked over here uh, and that's my spot so i'm going to cut away and see if i can get that apart there we go so i'll just push the earth back in so you'll have an idea how this is going to work so here it comes hey isn't that great i removed the bucket the bladder without disturbing the roots the roots now that the bucket has been removed, all I have to do is take the rest of the topsoil and fill it in around. And I'm going to raise the edges around it so that when the water uh, is poured in here, when I water it, it goes directly to the roots instead of running down the hill. And once we have all the soil and the, the ridge around here to hold the water in, I'm going to put three stakes uh, with uh, rubber cords around the tree to hold it, to keep it nice and steady, especially when it's growing at its early stages. That is crucial. Just like the one over here, it's been on there for about 10 years. And it's so now we have the tree. It's finally planted with this beautiful topsoil mixed in with a three-in-one soil and some native soil as well. And I've 
topped it up around the side so that when I water it or when it rains, uh, the water will directly go into the root system, which is crucial during the first year of this tree. You should be watering it twice a week during the first year. And after that, the following year, once a week you should be watering it, giving lots of water for the, de for the roots to develop, which is uh, really important. So uh, I'm gonna start right now. And uh, it's getting late, so thanks for watching, hope you watch again, and uh, we'll see you in the garden, bye bye.